Hey friends, welcome back. I just got back from Toronto and we're catching up with the founder and CEO of VLight. His name is Lou Lim and we're gonna talk about photobiomodulation and how this therapy can enhance brain health, it can affect hormone levels. It's a two-part series just about photobiomodulation for the brain and then I'm gonna interview the folks over at Juve. I think I've shared with you on other videos, or I know I have, I just don't know if you've watched them, uh, about using photobiomodulation, how I've been using that for hormone levels. And I'll put a link here to another video where we talked about that. But you'll also see this in the medical research list in PubMed and Google Scholar, listed as low-level light therapy. Uh, I'll put this paper, I'm gonna rip my paper. This is one of the papers that I found to be really, uh, like kind of a good summary of the different uh, medical applications of low-level light therapy or photobiomodulation. But anyway, in this video, we're gonna cut very soon to Lou Lim, and he's gonna explain how photobiomodulation works in the brain in a device that I have called the V-Light, and it has a little intranasal photobiomodulation sensor and other sensors on the brain that affect the default mode network and can affect memory, cognition, focus, and much more. So hope you enjoy this video. Let's cut to it with Lou. You wanna shoot him again? Do you wanna sit there? Let me just try putting it on him yeah. before you're shooting just to get the position oh, in. Right, and this is the gamma okay. unit, right? Yeah. 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 So then this would go in your nose. I've okay. already cleaned it off for you, but anyways, we're not having a record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Turn it on. This is the gamma. Uh huh. And it's it's going in. Eh? Sit yeah, just sit and meditate for a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what is this? You're on. <laughs> we were recording. <laughs> yeah. That I was just uh, Maybe if you could explain, uh, we're going to talk with Lou upstairs and stuff about it, but mm -hmm. what, what's a technology doing, or a brief overview right now? What it does is it is actually elevating the brainwave oscillations to the higher oscillations, uh, like gamma, beta, and alpha. And down regulate the slow frequencies like delta, 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 delta. There's a lot of people that want to enhance brain health, right? And so ketogenic style diets, intermittent fasting, exercise. Is this an adjunctive therapy in your opinion that, that can help to increase neurogenesis and mitochondrial function within the brain? Yeah, I mean, there's enough science and evidence to show that, you know, the effect is mainly on the mitochondria. And mitochondria is fundamental, you know, of, me talking to you, you just sitting there, everything works in the mitochondria, the fact that you're not, even not say, the muscles are not shaking, the, there is this energy being produced to control it, you know, so otherwise you'll be shaking like Parkinson's disease patients, for example. So mitochondria energy production is in play all the time. Yeah. And, and, you know, in the process you're talking about uh, producing certain uh, molecules to be signaling molecules uh, you know that leads to uh, gene transcri transcription uh, that translates into many things like you know um, healing getting a body in that homeostatic state uh, so a, a bunch of things so mitochondria is really important yeah and uh, and uh, he, you know and we when you talk about um, improving your state, your physical and uh, mental state. Yeah, if you can, uh, you know, restore homeostasis, whether you do it by nutrition as you're trying to do or some other ways like we try and do, uh, it's always a good thing, you know, when, you, when the body uh, attempts to reestablish homeostasis, uh, healing takes place. Mm -hmm. So if you're not well, you're, you know, you're below optimal functioning, that's going to help. <clears throat> So that's, uh, that's why I think it works, you know, it's really getting the body uh, to get into the process of re-establishing balance or re-establishing normal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the basis of it. Yeah. In, in the interview, we'll talk more about the mechanisms and the default mode network. I think that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. But um, it, So Sally Smith, 47 years old, wants to maintain her cognition. How many minutes a day should they do uh, treatment? So we have another device, um, just an intrinsic nasal only, say the uh -huh. A10, and it is very user friendly. It's gentle. That's uh, you know I've not known of a, a major side effect. You can do it once a day or once every two days, 
uh, that kind of you know uh, activate your brain when you're using it to you know to you know to be normal and like I said you know to, to try to establish the balanced state mm -hmm. so I think in the process when you do it regularly that's going to help prevent yeah. uh, problems like possible onset of dementia for example uh, awesome. uh, you know the wrong chemical process that leads to depression for example mm -hmm. so you know it's useful there's no side effects easy to use why not just use it Taking daily it. You know? yeah is this something that we could get naturally i mean if we're out in the sun as much or um or is this like a modern are, are we getting the best of science mm -hmm. in nature with this technology i think going to the sun is great yeah. you know i'm a proponent of getting sunlight as much as you can without getting sunburned. Yeah. So, because you get, you know, you know, you synthesize vitamin D and so on. We're meant to be, you know, to have to spend time in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, not a lot of people get the opportunity to go to the sun very often, like us in Canada, in yeah. winter, for example. But I think uh, this does a bit more than the sunlight because people living in areas where there's a lot of sun still have problems. Mm -hmm. So I think more focus penetration in particular areas of the brain or you know the body uh, is going to help as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I guess final question here, like if uh, before we get into our interview, which is going to be awesome, I'm really excited to talk more about the science. But um, if, if people want to like master a topic, maybe learn a foreign language faster, learn something, would would be studying with using this device would that accelerate the learning potentially? Uh, we don't know, mm. but looking at the brain patterns, um, I think some people are going to respond more than the others. Uh, example, people who have ADD, um, so they're kind of locked in in the lower, slower brain oscillations and you know, not getting out of that state and therefore not being able to focus. Yeah. And that's a problem. So we might be able to do that is, uh, we don't know for sure until we do a clinical study, mm -hmm. but the theory is there. Uh, and, uh, and gamma state, you know, like now we have enough evidence to indicate to us that when we do this, say for gamma 40 hertz, it does elevate say, your brain state into a higher frequency, uh, you know, a brainwave pattern. And that that is associated with, uh, you know, better thinking, processing, more activity in the brain. So it should help. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's go upstairs talk more about the science. This okay. has been a great treatment. Really cool. I'm excited. Okay. Do you normally do 20 minutes, you'd recommend? Yeah, just leave it on. It shuts yeah. off automatically. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to get one before I leave. Okay. And which one would you recommend? The alpha or gamma? Um, why don't you try both of them? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll try the uh, I'll try the alpha later. Yeah, the, actually the alpha is for general use, and you know it doesn't have some of the side effects that the gamma has. Okay. Some people with the gamma, they I know they tell us that they have um, you know more they, you know the brain is sharp, more mm. active. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the problems might be the some people might get a little bit spaced out. Mm. Uh, some get uh, may not be able to sleep so well that particular Your night. Thinking and racing and stuff, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of people don't feel anything. Yeah. But we can see, you know, the brain uh, changes. You know, changing with EEG. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll go with the gamma. Yeah. I like that. That was neat. Mm. Cool. Wow. Thanks for creating this technology, Lou. This is great. Sure. Just so I understood, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, the position of most of the electrodes on the, on the, the neuro unit are where the default mode network nodes are. Did I hear that yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the purpose of the intranasal light, uh, what it, if we can explain kind of how that works and what the... So uh, one of the nodes of the default mode network is the hippocampus. So that's kind of closer to the bottom of your brain and the older, you know, deeper in, mm -hmm. which is responsible for memory. So that's one of the, you know, later discovered nodes of the default mode network. But generally speaking, if you can deliver light to the brain, uh, there is quite a lot of indirect signaling going on that eventually gets spread, you know. 
if, uh, if the hippocampus is part of the default, no net, default mode network, it gets connected to the other areas. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps, but probably not as effective as you know putting it all together on the, you know to other nodes and so on. But we've been getting, like I said in the beginning, we only had the intranasal. It has worked. It has even worked on Alzheimer's patients. Wow. Um, but we are seeing greater response when we have more of this together. Mm -hmm. So it does reach the brain in some way. A lot of it reach, say, uh, just above the nasal cavity is the olfactory bulb. Uh, it is, if you have cognitive impairments, if you have Alzheimer's, even Parkinson's have been linked in some way. You've, you know, he, uh, researchers have found actually dysfunction or some impairments in the olfactory bulb. Hmm. If you have, say, early Alzheimer's, uh, your smell is impaired, you know, probably on the left side. Um, hmm. So they are related, and the olfactory bulb has a direct projection to the hippocampal area. So when we affect that area, we are likely to also affect the memory processing area of your brain. Wow. Then it gets connected to the rest of your brain. 